I want to take a little bit of time here. We're not done. But, but there's a theology to this story. This, Exodus is not just a historical record, and who cares what you get away with this, but this is just kind of what happened, and you come to your own conclusions. That's not Exodus. Exodus is a book that includes only what's important for us to know theologically, what God is trying to tell us about him and us and our world. And so in other words, here's what God is saying to you and to me by this deliberate repetition in this passage that we've looked at today. Here's what God is saying. I know your life is hard. You don't know the half of it. You keep diverting yourself with smartphones and entertainment and this and that, going from one relationship to the next, one meal to the next, one drink to the next, one thing to the next, but you don't know what it is you're trying to hide, what you're trying to keep down. I know. It is a loneliness. It is an emptiness. In fact, I know in reality it's harder than you have any idea. I know there's an empty forever that at times if you let it, here it comes. Deep down, but it rises. A loneliness that makes you feel sad, painful when it comes upon you. I see it. I hear it. And I care. But guess what? I have loved you thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago, I drew a circle around you and I said, you know what, you're mine. I will rescue you from this. I will redeem you, restore you to the glory I've always intended from eternity past that I created you for and a glory that will last forever. You're not getting out of this story. You've been born into a story and you're not getting out because I want you. I am coming to rescue you. I'm going to redeem you, and I am going to bring you back to me, to real intimacy, the me that your heart has always longed for. And I will forever be your God. No more fear, no more worry, no more emptiness, no more loneliness, no more death, no more dying. I am your Yahweh. I am your He is. And I am going to share my great and glorious world with you again forever. I swear it. I swear it. I swore it 4,000 years ago to Abraham. I swore it 3,400 years ago to Moses and the Israelites. I swore it 2,000 years ago when I became a human being and I lived the perfect life that you should have lived. I lived it for you. I died the death that you should have died. I died it for you. I rose from the dead so I can restore you. I swear that has already happened. I swear I'm going to do this for you. This is the story you were born into, and I swear I will fulfill it. From start to end, every aspect of the story of Exodus is simply a microcosm of the much larger Exodus from death to light, of the greater redemption in Jesus Christ. And so it is in the New Testament that God says to every believer in Christ, I will live with them and walk with them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. That's what your heart has always longed for. I swear I'll do it. God says to us in 2 Corinthians 1.20, for no matter how many promises, all the promises we're reading about in the Old Testament, every promise, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. I swear, I've already done it. It's already done. I swear, they are yes. And so through him, the amen, the let it be, let it be so, is spoken by us to the glory of God. Amen. Amen.